So thank you everyone for coming. I'm Stephen from the Manhattan Wood Library. And we are very excited to introduce Lauren from Wishing on a Star to tell us about Disney travel planning. Uh, just a couple of things before we get started. I would like to point out that we have another virtual event scheduled in February on Tuesday the 8th, which is Genealogy 101 with Suzanne Bates. I'm just gonna post the link to that in the chat if anyone's interested. Uh, and then, so Lauren's gonna be doing a presentation and then we will open it up to a Q&A. So thank you again for everyone for coming. I'll leave it to you. All right. Hey everybody, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, so I am going to leave a good amount of time open at the end for um, Q&A. Um, so just pop your message or your questions in the chat box and I'll answer them then because I do feel like there's probably just a lot of questions with Disney because um, there's so much um, going on. So um, I just want to start out by introducing myself. Like I said, um, my name's Lauren and I'm a travel agent with Wishing on a Star Travel. We're a full service travel agency, but we really do specialize in Disney. Um, so I've actually started going to Disney when I was two years old and I haven't missed a year since. Um, some years I go more than once. Um, and I have two daughters, they are 12 and 11 right now. And so they have gone, I've taken my children every year. So I have taken kids at every age. Um, so because every age is different at Disney and what you wanna do and how they're kind of gonna react to Disney. Um, so it is very interesting to watch your kids grow um, at Disney World. Um, so I started at the, the travel agency a few years ago because my passion for Disney um, really got me started because I figured I'm traveling there and I'm always the go-to person when my friends are taking trips there. They always ask me questions, you know, what reserv or what um, restaurants should we eat at? What rides do you suggest? So I figured I might as well start doing it for work, right? It only makes sense. So, um, and I've loved it. Um, I love planning everybody's vacations and seeing all the smiling photos when everybody gets back because I think the biggest goal is not to be the family on Main Street USA in Magic Kingdom that is arguing about what restaurant you want to eat at, what ride you should go on next, and um, you know the kid's balloon is flying away in the air as everyone's arguing. So you never want to be those people. <laughs> so my goal is to help you not be them. Um, so let me just, yeah, so I'm just going to get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Actually, let me put my thinking ears on. So one of my favorite things about Disney is the merchandise. Um, so I got my Valentine's Day ears out for you guys since Valentine's Day is the next uh, holiday coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So, all right, so when you're planning a Disney vacation, what are all of the things that go into it? So I love Disney, but they haven't made it very easy for you. So you have to pick a resort, you have to pick your restaurants. What are you gonna do when you're not at the parks? Do you want park hoppers? You only wanna go to one park per day. How are you gonna get to the parks? How are you gonna get to the Disney World from the airport? How are you gonna you know, get on the rides? How are you gonna get food? Um, so there's so many things that go into a Disney vacation now um, that didn't happen. You know, if you haven't been in 10, 20 years, things have changed dramatically. Even in the past year, things have changed dramatically. Um, so I'm just going to go over a few of those changes or a lot of those changes tonight um, because there is quite a lot. So first of all, a quick rundown of Disney World, um, ca the campus in Florida. So there's four theme parks, Magic Kingdom, which is the classic, all the classic rides, the castles there, Epcot, which you can walk around the world, um, you know, try food from around the world. Um, and it's the one with the, let's see, it's right here with the big golf ball looking um, <laughs> dome. Hollywood Studios, which has become, it used to not be a, fan favorite, but it has quickly become one because Toy Story Land is there and um, Galaxy's Edge is there. Um, and then there's Animal Kingdom, which is um, kind of an immersive animal park. You can ride a safari, see animals up close. Um, and it also has Pandora, which has become um, pretty, they have two rides there. One of the rides is probably my favorite ride at Disney World. It's not like any um, other ride I've been on. 
um, there's two water parks, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach, which if you go in the wintertime, um, they're usually remodeling or re uh, furbishing one. So one might be closed. They try and alternate. So there's always one open. There are three golf courses. So for any golfers, or if you're dragging your husbands to Disney and you're like, no, no, I promise there's something there for you. There's golf courses. Um, there's too many golf courses. Um, then there's the Disney Springs, which has um, a ton of restaurants and shops. Um, so, you know, more places to go shopping at Disney. Um, the ESPN Sports Complex, um, they have soccer fields and football fields there. They used to have, the Atlanta Braves used to have spring training there. They don't have that there anymore. Um, but if you do a Run Disney event, which we'll talk about Run Disney a little bit later, um, you'll go there and pick up your um, packets. So there's also 31 resorts at Disney. So kind of sifting through all of the um, different types of re resorts is a big one because when you're planning a Disney vacation, you know, one of the biggest things is where do you want to stay? What do you want? Um, what amenities do you want at your resort? That's one of our biggest um, things, at least. So there are six value resorts, five moderate, eight deluxe, and 12 deluxe villas. We're going to go over those in the next slide. Um, so that is Disney World. It is a pretty big um, campus, but they actually have more land. So I hear they're talking about building more. We'll see. Um, so the Disney Resort categories, like I said, this is probably the first decision you're going to make if you're going to Disney World and you want to stay on Disney property. So real quick, I'll talk about the benefits of Disney staying on Disney property. So um, you there is um, transportation from all of the Disney resorts. All the Disney resorts have buses. Some Disney resorts have boats or the new Skyliner, which are these gondolas that float through the sky. They're pretty amazing. My kids just like riding the Skyliner. Um, and then you'll also get right now they're doing extra um, magic hours in the morning. You get into the parks a half an hour early, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it really does make a difference. And sometimes when you show up, early they're even letting you in before that half an hour so if they're you know if the park opens at eight people staying on property can get into the parks at 7 30 but sometimes they're letting you in at 7 15 and you can kind of run to the uh, most popular rides and get in line before everybody else as you're like running past uh the people that aren't staying on property that are waiting in line for another 45 minutes um so um the Resort categories, there's the deluxe resorts, which have bigger rooms. All of the rooms have a balcony or a patio, uh, which is nice if you like to drink coffee in the morning or drink wine at night and don't want to be uh, disturbed. Um, they have table service and quick service restaurants. So table service is just a nice sit down restaurant. Quick service is more of a fast food type um, food offering. And then they have gyms, salons, spas, um, and a lot more. Um, some of them have fishing options that where you can like rent a fishing pole and fish for the day. Um, the new one, Riviera, which is the photo on there, um, they have like different games, like giant, they have a giant chess board that you can play on. They have cornhole, like uh, bag boards and all kinds of stuff to keep you, you know, you're able to spend a little time. The kids are driving you nuts. You can just take a walk and play a chess game, um, which is nice. So the moderate resorts um, have a little bit smaller rooms than de the deluxe. They have um, queen size beds, table service, and a food court. So it is similar to the deluxe resorts, but the deluxe resorts um, might have multiple options for the table service restaurants, uh, while the moderates typically only have one. Um, oh, and the deluxe resorts have this as well. So the main pool at the moderate and the deluxe resorts have water slides. So if your kids are fish and they want to swim and they like to go down water slides all day, um, then moderate and deluxe are really what um, you should look at. So, and actually the best pool on property is at the Yacht and Beach Club. They have, it's called Stormalong Bay. They have a lazy river. They have an amazing water slide. Um, they have sand in the pool. They have like a sandbar in the pool. It's a little different. It's kind of cool. And there's also an amazing ice cream place that's right next door that you can get the, um, it's called Mickey's Kitchen Sink, and you can load up on all the ice cream that you want. 
Um, so then the value resorts, it's a, it's a smaller room. They have double size beds. Um, they only have the food court dining option. Um, and then, but the theming at a lot of those resorts are a lot of fun. As you can see in the photo, you can see Sebastian. So they have um, this, that's from Art of Animation. So they have a Little Mermaid area, a Cars area and a Lion King area. So the kids really like the, the theming at the value resorts. So it is nice. Something to think about when you're picking a, a Disney resort too is all of, they kind of manage their resorts differently. So um, all of the resorts are given a budget within their, you know, Deluxe has the biggest budget than moderate in value. And the resorts actually get to choose how they spend that budget. So some of them are like, we're gonna put a lot of money into um, transportation. We want lots of buses coming to our resort. So our um, guests are always, you know, they never have to wait for a bus. Other resorts might not put that money there. Maybe they put it into the food. So, you know, it's kind of different um, across the board. Um, so it takes a little bit of research um, and I've stayed at most of the resorts and I can tell you, which ones have the best transportation, which ones have the best food, which, you know, it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, so I think a lot of you are probably on here with um, questions about what is new at Disney because a lot has changed in the past year or two. Um, so now when COVID hit and Disney reopened, they started with park reservations and they have continued with that. So parks are not at maximum capacity. They're pretty close. Um, when it's busy, it is still busy. Um, but you do need to make a park reservation. So um, you do that ahead of time. Um, ideally, you do it like right when you um, when you book your trip, um, because you don't want your park to fill, like if you wanna to go to Magic Kingdom on Wednesday, you don't want your uh, your chances of that to go away. So, but the park reservations can be changed at any time. And if you um, are doing a park or a park hopper pass, you just make the reservation for your first park. And at 2 p.m. you can hop to the next park. You don't have to sign up for it. Um, but the what we found out was if you don't go to your first park, you have to go to guest services to go into another park at night. So we, me and my girls went to Animal Kingdom in the morning. My husband wanted to sleep in. So he was going to just meet us at Epcot later on in the day. He had to go to guest services. He, they weren't going to, or they were giving a, him a hard time, jokingly, a hard time at the entrance because he didn't go to his first park. So um, you just have to make changes in the My Disney Experience app. Um, another change is magic bands. So um, if you're not familiar with magic bands, I should have had one handy. Um, they are just little bracelets that you can use to open your door. It's your park ticket. You can use it like you can link your credit card to it. Um, and then you can just tap and pay as you go. Um, so they used to be complimentary. They are no longer complimentary. You can purchase them and use them. Um, but you don't have to. And so um, what they're offering instead of a magic band is actually a card. And so it looks like a little credit card. It's the same thing. You use it as your room key. Your uh, You can link your car, uh, credit card to it. So you only have to carry one card if you choose to. Um, and it's also your park ticket. What I've been doing lately is you actually using my Apple Watch. So you can put your park pass into your Apple wallet for those of you that are Apple users. Um, and you can actually just use your Apple Watch the same way that you would a Magic Band. Or if you don't have an Apple Watch, but you have an Apple phone, you can actually tap your phone to the, the reader, which is nice. Um, they are going to be bringing it for Samsung phones at some point. Um, at least that's what I've heard. So I think the biggest change at Disney is Genie Plus. And I think a lot of people have questions about that. So Genie Plus is the replacement for Fast Passes. If anybody remembers the old Fast Pass um, system, but now um, they are charging for it. And um, it's a little different. So you can either book it with your package when you first book your Disney trip and do it for every day that you're going to a park or if you only want to do it for say Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios you would um, purchase the Genie Plus that morning. 
So, and then that's before 7 a.m. You can purchase the Genie Plus for that day. And then at 7 a.m. you can make your first Genie Plus um, pick. And so what's different between the Fast Passes and Genie Plus is you used to be able to pick three rides um, when like first thing in, the, or actually it was 60 days before your trip, you could pick three rides that you wanted to go on at Magic Kingdom or whatever park. So now you do it that morning and you do one ride at a time. So you do your first pick at before 7 a.m. And this is actually another perk for, uh, or at 7 a.m., sorry. This is another perk for um, guests staying on Disney property. You can make your first ride pick at 7. Guests that are not staying on property cannot do a, um, a ride pick until the park is actually open. You don't have to be at the park, but the park has to be open. Um, and then you can make um various like then you can make another one at nine and then after that you have to have used a, a ride pass or a lightning lane to um in order to make another one so we used it in january and we were able to make five um genie plus res or lightning lane reservations um for that day and you can if you're doing a park hopper you can make some at your first park and then some at your second park um, so it is, it's different. It's definitely a learning curve. It's still getting some of the kinks worked out of it, um, for sure. But, um, it, it, it's working. I, I don't mind it terribly. I do miss the old, honestly, I miss the old fast pass process, but Genie Plus is here and I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, so another thing since COVID is mobile ordering your meals. So if you're not doing a sit-down restaurant and you're going to do a quick service restaurant, mobile ordering has become crucial because um, a lot of the quick service restaurants, it's not a walk-up window anymore. You actually have to go into the My Disney Experience app and order your food ahead of time. And then they do have tables inside those restaurants, but you have to have ordered your food and your food has to be ready for you to go in and sit at the tables. So um, what we typically do is, you know, like at 11 o'clock, I'm looking at what restaurants are going to have availability at like 12 or 1230 because I don't want my kids and my husband, specifically my husband, to get cranky because he's hungry. <laughs> so um, so you can pick your or you can choose your pickup time. So you put your order in and you say, you know, 1215. So we're going to jump on Haunted Mansion. It's a 20 minute wait. We're jumping on and I'm going to get chicken fingers from Columbia Harbor House at 12 15 when we're off and then you tell you have to go back into the app and tell them you know I'm here or I'm they're preparing your order and then you tell them that you're there and then they'll give you a um your app will alert you that your food is ready and you can go in you show the cast member that's waiting there you can go in and get your food um so it is a little different um and if you aren't expecting that it is um you know that's when you're arguing and everybody's hungry and everyone's mad that they don't have food. So mobile ordering is definitely um, uh, pretty important to get used to in the app. I would say, I would suggest playing around in the My Disney Experience app before you go, just to get a lay of the land and uh, so you can find it easily. Um, so another change is Magical Express is no longer, which is very sad for those of you who have used Magical Express. It ended December uh, 31st, 2021. Mears uh, pulled the contract and they decided to do their own bus system. So now you can book separately through Mears, or I find that just taking an Uber is actually cheaper than the Mears Connect. Um, it just depends. Like if you have, um, like I have a client going, she's got three little kids. They all need car seats. She's like, I'm not dealing with an Uber. Cause um, in Orlando, just so you know, there is um, Uber car seat. So you can get an Uber with a car seat in it. You just have to order it through the app, but with three car seats, it's pretty hard to do. So she's opting to do the, the Mirrors Connect. Um, but we'll see, I don't know. I'm hoping Disney steps up and has another option for us soon. I know there's been talk about a train. Then I heard that there wasn't talk about a train. So we'll see. I haven't heard anything about that in a while. 
Um, so lots of stuff going on at Disney right now. If you didn't know, it is the 50th anniversary that was in October. It was October 1st of 2021. So they're doing an 18 month celebration. Um, so it ends in March of 2023. I don't know if there's a certain date for it, but the um, castle is done up special. They have 50 gold statues throughout all four parks. There are um, specialty drinks um, for adults and kids, specialty desserts as well. Um, so it's kind of fun to run around and find all of the um, the special food and drinks. Um, there's a lot of specialty merchandise, of course. It's Disney. You got to get your ears and your spirit jersey and your lounge fly bag and all the things. Um, so that's, it is pretty, the castle, I didn't like it at first. Whenever they changed the castle, I don't like it, but um, it's grown on me. It's really pretty. And another thing with the 50th, 50th anniversary, all four parks have special nighttime um, shows. So Magic Kingdom has a new fireworks show. Epcot has fireworks. Um, Animal Kingdom does not have fireworks uh, because the animals they have a light show instead. And Hollywood Studios has a light show as well. Um, so if you're a runner and you're going to Disney, they have four running events a year. There's the big marathon. It just happened um, in January. And so they usually, they have a 5K, 10K half marathon. And then the one in January, they have the full marathon. And if you are a really crazy runner, you can do all of the events and they call it the dopey challenge. Cause I mean, you have to be kind of dopey to do it. Um, <laughs> but uh, they are really fun. I've done um, two 5Ks and two half marathons there. And I'm not much of a runner. I don't mind running, but I'm not a runner. Um, they are a lot of fun. They have characters on the course. They play. We did the Star Wars half marathon. They had um, like scenes from the movie playing. They had people dressed up and all kinds of just fun, goofy stuff going on. Um, Disney does, of course, have a lot of festivals. Um, they're all mainly at Epcot. So there's the um, Festival of the Arts, which is actually going on now. Um, so they do a lot. They have a lot of art displays. They have um, food that's made into art um, and just different things around Epcot um, to interact with. Um, there's also the Food and Wine Festival in the fall, which might be my favorite because it's food and wine and you walk around Epcot to all the countries and then they have other booths from other countries interspersed and you get to eat and drink around the world all day. It's lovely. Um, and then they also have the flower and garden show in the spring, which um, is, you know, they do all kinds of amazing topiaries in the shapes of all the Disney characters. Um, they also have additional food and drink booths at Epcot. Um, which is just a lot of fun. And during the um, Flower and Garden show, they have um, garden racks at the American Pavilion at Epcot. So they have bands playing. So this year I just looked at it, like the Pointer Sisters are playing. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name, but they always have like people that you know. There's a guy that used to play in the Eagles that's gonna be there. Um, I saw the Beach Boys there a lot. I mean, it was a long time ago, but I saw the Beach Boys, some of the Beach Boys there. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, and then over Christmas, they have Festival of the Holidays. And so they have food booths from around the world representing all of the different traditional foods for the holidays. And they also have the candlelight processional and they always have celebrity um, uh, narrators for the um, candlelight procession. So like Neil Patrick Harris has been a narrator, Whoopi Goldberg has been a narrator. So they, they usually pull some pretty big celebrities so it's kind of fun and then you know they'll send they'll set the list and you can kind of check your dates and see who's going to be there um so right now they are running a summer deal at disney for select resorts um so you can save up to 500 dollars on a five night stay from march 6th to july 7th um that's the 500 on a five night stay is probably at a deluxe resort so it's uh, it's about a hundred dollars off a night at a deluxe resort, $40 off at a moderate, and then $20 off a night at um, a value. So it's just a little incentive to book Disney right now. And I'm gonna stop sharing. Well, here, actually, I'll put that up. Um, if you want to take down my email address, if you wanna contact me about a, a trip, um, I am always here for questions. Um, 
And yeah, so now we can do some question and answers. I will stop sharing my screen so I can see the chat box again. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, pop them in there. I can literally talk Disney for days. Um, so, and I always tell people, the more questions you ask me, the, the more you're going to get out of um, your vacation because I can, I, so, so, you know, when I plan a trip, I, um, for a client, I act like it's my trip and I give them all of the information that I have. I have lots of tips and tricks over the years. Um, I've been to Disney over 50 times. Um, this year I went, or 2021, I went three times. So um, I have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge at Disney. So I try and cram it all into documents. They get pretty wordy. Um, so the best way to get information out of me is to ask questions um, because I can literally talk about Disney all day. So um, yeah, just pop any questions you have into the chat box and um, I would love to answer them for you guys. Can you throw the screen back up with your email? I yeah way too fast <laughs> oh sorry yes and then so kelly asked what hotel do i like most for nine and six year olds so let me just share that real quick um so there's you know it depends on um what your your budget is and all of the hotels have activities at night so all of the hotels offer movies at the pool they all offer s'mores um which you buy the s'mores it's a extra cost but you can make s'mores around a campfire um at the pool during the day they have different activities um so you know, I think all of the pools are, are great. And it just kind of depends on what your kids are interested in. Like I said, like Yacht and Beach Club, if your kids love to swim, Yacht and Beach Club is the place to stay. Um, if you want to have a theme park view of Magic Kingdom at night and watch the fireworks from like at Contemporary, if you have a theme park view, you can watch the fireworks from your uh, balcony and you can um, play the music on your TV. So you can hear the music from the parks, sit in your, we've done this, you sit in your pajamas on the balcony and you make, we always pack popcorn in our suitcase. So you pack your popcorn, make it, and just hang out on the, the balcony and watch the fireworks. Um, Polynesian is also a beautiful spot to watch the fireworks from um so and then the the value resorts like i said uh art of animation has really fun theming for the kids the pools are um there's a cars pool it's the cozy cone hotel for or motel from the the movie and they have all the cones those are like little cabanas around the pool it's really cute um that the kids really like um Caribbean beach is fun. It's like a fun atmosphere. I mean, Disney, it's Disney. They've made sure that all of the, the resorts have something for the kids. Um, so let me do this. All right. Can I, am I good to take my um, contact down? Cause I can't. All right. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. I can't see the chat box when I'm in there. Um, so so yeah, it kind of just depends on what you guys are looking for. Um, and because there are so many, it is good to have some reasonable help with that. Um, I hope that answered your question. It's kind of a all over the place answer, but um, there's just so many things that go into the, to deciding what resort you want to stay at. Okay, anybody else have questions? Um, so, so I've actually stayed at almost all of the resorts. The only ones that I haven't stayed at are Riviera, which is the brand new deluxe resort. And it is pretty pricey. Um, it is my goal. It's on my bucket list to stay there. Um, it's beautiful. It smells amazing. That's a new thing that Disney's doing. Everything has like a certain smell and I just want to bottle it up. Um, but Riviera is absolutely breathtaking. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, you take your kids to Disney. Um, if you're looking for an adults only vacation, Disney's actually a really great spot for that too. Um, my husband and I did that a couple of years ago. We stayed at a nicer resort, 
and um you know actually well we stayed at beach club because it's actually a seven minute walk from beach club to uh epcot world showcase so it's a seven minute walk to drink around the world so that was exactly what we wanted to do we only did two days at the parks and both days were at epcot so you know you can make disney whatever you want um or you know whatever you're looking for um let's see when I, well, I saw Wendy said that the fireworks, you guys missed the fireworks when you were there. Thankfully they're back. Um, oh, that's another change. So the um, Disney isn't having big parades right now because they don't want to draw crowds um, to one central location. So they are having small cavalcades, um, which are really cute. They have a lot of different ones. Um, actually, let me see if I can pull up a video oh, maybe not um sorry so they have like they'll have mickey and minnie chip and dale and pluto and it's just like a really short parade or cavalcade disney has a lot of lingo they have to get used to so uh they are not parades they're cavalcades um but you can tell that they're coming because the music gets really loud and then um all of a sudden the the characters appear and they're coming down uh, like main street in the magic kingdom which is just a lot of fun i actually like them better than the parades because the old parades you would set up like you would camp out for an hour because you so you had a good spot and then you know people are bumping into you and you're missing all that ride time so i actually really like the cavalcades better um kelly what time of year do i suggest going so um the quiet, I feel like a lot of people always ask when the quietest time to go to Disney is, and that is anytime the kids are in school. So if it like September is a really quiet time because the kids have just gone back to school. Nobody wants to take them out of school, you know, like right away. So September is usually really quiet, but the nice thing about September is the food and wine festival has already started and the Halloween decor decorations are up and the um, Halloween parties are going on. So the parties are back. Um, they were previously not happening. They have a Halloween party and a Christmas party. So um, Halloween parties start in August. So September is a great time to go. Um, I was just looking um, earlier today and April is extremely quiet, which is nice. Um, it's a good another good time to go end of April, not the beginning because that's all spring break. Times to avoid for sure are spring break, Christmas, and summer because those are the busiest times. Christmas is beautiful. It's a lot of fun to go over Christmas break, um, but you do have a lot of people there. Um, but like the beginning of December is a really good time to go because it is quieter as well because people are just coming off Thanksgiving break, not ready, you know, getting ready for Christmas break. And so it's kind of an in-between time. Um, so yeah, but really any time of year is good to go to Disney. Um, I have been at all kinds of times. Um, but I think that anytime the kids are not in or are in school, that's a good time to go to Disney. All right. So the evening shows parks typically close. No, so the parks are open later now. Um, oh, okay. So the parks are open till like eight or nine right now because it is a quieter time. They do close a little bit earlier when it's um, not as busy, um, but sometimes they'll be open till like 10. So can't find the park hours on the site. So the easiest way to do it is actually just to Google Disney World Park Hour calendar because okay. it'll take you to that link. Yeah, I have a hard time finding the, the hours calendar too. Um, but yeah, just Google that and it should take you right there. Yeah, and the evening shows, the new ones that they're doing for the 50th are really amazing. Um, and they're long. So it used to be like maybe a 10 minute firework show. Um, now they're like pretty substantial. The one at Magic Kingdom, I think is put, it's gotta be between 15 and 20 minutes. Um, and if you have not seen a Disney firework show, like it is beyond anything else. Like you'll go to a, a nice 4th of July firework show and you're like, I've been to Disney. Thank you for your effort. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend 
watching all of the shows. Um, and actually Animal Kingdom has a daytime show now too called Kite Tales. Um, and it's a bunch of jet skis that are pulling um, Disney character kites behind them. It's pretty interesting. It's short. Um, it's different. It's very different than anything I've ever seen at Disney. Um, yeah. So. I don't know if it's the case. It's been years. Mm -hmm. We we used to go for a mother daughter mother son trip mm -hmm. right around Casmer Pulaski. It was also my son's birthday, and I just take a couple extra days out of school. Mm -hmm. And we figured it's not spring break yet, mm -hmm. and it's going to be dead. And this is this is twenty years ago, but we learned that Canada takes their spring breaks the entire month of March. Each yes. province gets a week. And it was, it was March 3rd or 4th, but it was packed <laughs> and we weren't expecting it. Cause of course, back then the parks closed at five or six too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that is still kind of the case. It hasn't been so because Canada right now, um, them coming Can't travel, in, I don't think can they? No, not well, they're having a real hard time. I don't think that they can come in yet. Um, the other time to avoid is the first week of November because that is Jersey week in New Jersey and all of those schools are off for the week. So uh, literally like everyone in New Jersey goes to Disney world. Like if, if they have small kids, it's kind of insane. I was just there this past November um, for a agency training and it was, it was crazy. Um, all right. So is there a specific restaurant or dish that you particularly re recommend trying if you're only going once? Um, Oh man, that's hard. So I will say Disney has gotten um, really good about food. So I remember when I was growing up, it was like burgers and hot dogs. There was nothing too exciting except for Dole Whip. If you haven't had Dole Whip, if you don't know what Dole Whip is, please investigate it because it is amazing. Um, it's just pineapple ice cream, but for whatever reason, it's the best thing in the world. Um, so now they have a lot of gourmet <coughs> that are absolutely amazing um, that I will go back to 17 times. So, you know, there's different restaurants at Disney. So number one, I feel like this is important for the kids. Number one place to get chicken tenders at Disney World is Columbia Harbor House in Magic Kingdom. Um, it is across from Haunted Mansion, best ch chicken fingers in the parks. Um, best sit down restaurant, I think, is the brand new Space 220. Um, it is an experience in itself. It is expensive, but the food is top notch. Um, I ordered a drink and it came out in the glass and there was like a puff of cotton candy and they poured it over and you know the cotton candy disappears and my kids are amazed by it. I ordered the salmon. It comes out with this um, glass like cake topper on it and there's smoke in it because it's smoked salmon and they like you know wiggle it around and pull it off and the smoke goes everywhere my kids are like oh, what kind of restaurant are we in so I I'm a big fan of Space 220 um but I mean I probably could make a list of 20 restaurants that I love at Disney World because they really have stepped up their food game a lot um, so if we went to Magic Kingdom in the morning, is it practical to go back to the resort sometime in the afternoon and then return to the parks in the evening for the fireworks? 100%. Um, the transportation at, like to and from the parks is pretty good. Um, and if it's going to like make everybody, like give everybody a break and relax and keep everybody happy, 100%. Um, you know, getting to and from the park, depending on what resort you're at, um, could take, you know, 20, 30 minutes if you're taking a bus at the um, the Magic Kingdom resorts. So like Polynesian, Contemporary, and Grand Floridian, you just hop on the monorail from Magic Kingdom to go back to your resort, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, we definitely do that. We'll go early in the morning. So it's called rope dropping. When you go early in the morning, you're the first ones in the park and you're booking it to the most popular rides to get in line. So you don't have to wait. Um, so, you know, you're up at 
six o'clock in the morning trying to get to the parks and then you also want to see the nighttime show 100 percent. so the busiest time in the parks is typically in middle of in the middle of the day because everybody like people have woken up late you know they went and got breakfast and they're filtering into the parks that's definitely the busiest time of the day definitely take a break um our colleague went last year at end of april crowds were low except for a cheer competition any knowledge of any of these events coming up again so good news for us <laughs> not for the cheer competitions, but um, they do not have a contract with Disney anymore. Pop Warner and the cheerleaders are now, I believe, at Universal. Yes, I see you dancing. Yes, same. Um, very exciting um, because it was crazy. So the bands, well, and actually the bands aren't going either um, because they're not having, they're not in the parades. So there's no bands either. So um, so it is a lot quieter. There's not as many school groups for sure. It's very nice. Um, will magic bands from 2019 work? They could. Um, so the battery life on those, it kind of varies. It depends on how many times you've used it. I would say if you've only used it once or twice, it should work. Um, but you can always, you can't unfortunately check in My Disney Experience to see if it works, but you can check at the front desk of the resort when you check in. Um, all right, I just wanna make sure I didn't miss anybody. No, I don't think I did. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love Magic Bands. Um, they're fun, especially for the kids. I use my Apple Watch because it's kind of the same thing, but I did purchase Magic Bands to wear my kids when we went in January. That was part of their Christmas present because everything they got for Christmas had to do with our Disney trip in January. Um, so yeah, I but yeah, from 2019, they should definitely work, I think, as long as you didn't use them a ton. Um, but they've been sitting because, well, mine are much older, but the magic bands have been sitting. Don't batteries kind of get stale just? Yeah, so they around? could. Yeah, it definitely depends on how long you've had them um, and how many times you've used them. It's just a shame you can't find out. Beforehand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do the kids, so the kids can use the magic bands for um, the room. So my kids always race each other from like the bus, well, not the bus stop, but like once we're like entering the, the hallway, they like race each other to see who gets to open the door. It's very important that they're the ones that open the door. Um, but it's also their um, ticket into the theme park. Instead of using the card, the kids just think it's pretty fun and they actually use it for the lightning lanes as well so you'll tap either your magic band or your card um so that they can like read that you are supposed to be in the lightning lane um then so yeah it's just really fun and the little mickey mouse glows which is cute um they are waterproof which is nice um and if for the adults you can apply charging uh purposes to whoever you choose to so my 13 and 12 year old i do not give them charging purchase uh powers because we would have like 70 more mini ears um yeah um all right is my disney experience the only app needed to download before the trip is that the app you mentioned at, earlier for mobile ordering yes so everything is in your My Disney Experience app. Um, they do have the new Genie in there. So if you don't purchase Genie Plus, you still get Genie, um, which will be your tip board and where you can see what the line weights are for um, the park that you're in that day. Um, and yes, yeah, so that's where you do your mobile ordering. You can see a map of the park in there. Um, you can, like, if you have dining reservations, it's all laid out in there. So if you're like, uh, are we eating at four or five? I don't remember because, you know, you're, you've been in a park all day and your brain is scrambled. So you can look in there easily and see what time you need to be at the, the restaurant. So, um, yeah, my Disney experience is the only app that you need. There is another app that I suggest, especially for younger kids. Um, it's called Disney Play. So it actually links up in the, um, the lines. So, you know, if you're in line for, um, 
like Big Thunder Mountain. They have like either a game or music or a puzzle or, you know, look for something in the line um, that the kids can kind of interact with, which is really nice um, so that they're, you know, you're kind of doing it together instead of them just like playing on their phone or tablet or whatever. Um, so I do, I do suggest uh, Disney Play if you don't think that your kids um, are going to enjoy waiting in line. I will say the Disney lines are nice because they do, um, they, some of them have interactive things. There's lots of things to look at. There are hidden Mickeys everywhere at Disney World. So that's one of our favorite things to do is look for um, the Disney or the hidden Mickeys. Um, there are books that you can buy on Amazon with all of the locations of the hidden Mickeys. So if you want to be the the one that knows it all and, you know, tell everybody else to look in this area. It's kind of fun. Um, and, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. There's something else. I'll think of it. <laughs> um, it was something about the lines. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, my Disney experience has everything in it for you. But I would definitely play around with it beforehand so you can get a lay of the land. Oh, that's what it was. So in Disney, everybody's on their phones. Everybody's taking pictures. You know, you're trying to get your rides. You're trying to see what reservation you're supposed to go to next. Your phone is going to die because you're using your phone a lot. So one of the biggest things um, that I suggest is getting an external charger for your phone to bring with you into the parks. Um, they do have fuel rod stations at Disney where you can swap them out. If you're familiar with fuel rod, um, you can purchase them there. Or if you have one from here, you can easily just swap them out. Um, but I definitely recommend getting those. Um, yeah, um, any other questions? I was starting to type, but this will be quicker to ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it may not be your area. Mm -hmm. We, well, we've never stayed on property, but we stay at the Hilton Lake Buena Vista, which is across mm -hmm. from Disney Springs yes. and with in the past with our room key, et cetera, we mm -hmm. get the magic hours, the shuttles to the park, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we've always then been able to, well, it used to be 180 days before when you got your magic pass and your uh, dining reservations. It's mm -hmm. not that early anymore. So no. do, you, do you think that we'd still have, well, Genie Plus is the equivalent of magic pass, correct? Or the replacement yeah. of? For fast pass, yes. You, so um, fast pass, I'm sorry, yes. So yeah. do you think it would work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I actually I do work with the good the good neighbor resorts. Um, so there are still shuttles, and you can make your dining with certain good neighbor resorts. You can make your um, your dining reservation 60 days ahead of time. Um, and then they also do have a dining card that you can do. Uh, and that's only at the Good Neighbor Resorts where you can purchase, it's like, I think it's, you pay $70 a day, but you get $80 a day on the card as a little bonus. Um, but yeah, so everything is still the same with the Good Neighbor Resorts, as long as it's, and um, Lake Buena Vista is a Good Neighbor Resort. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, dining is 60 days ahead of time instead of the 180, which makes things a little bit easier. I feel like planning things 180 days out are, it's just crazy to think that far ahead of time for a um, vacation. Um, yeah. So yeah, the Good Neighbor Resorts are really nice. I like them a lot because a lot of them are walking distance to uh, Disney Springs, which is amazing. Um, and then, so, and there are a lot of Disney resorts that have, that are boat ride, boat rides away from Disney Springs. If you want to go to Disney Springs, one of my, um, tips for Disney Springs is don't go at night. It has become really crazy and very busy. So I avoid weekends and weeknights at Disney Springs. So if you want to do Disney Springs, plan a day for it, daytime for it, because it's gotten really busy. Um... 
Did you guys have any other questions? Oh, do you have any experience parking at the parks? Pros and cons. So for parking at the parks, you do have to pay um, a parking fee. And the trams are back, which is nice. So we parked there last year and the trams were not back. So you had to walk. Um, the parks that are convenient, more convenient to park at are Hollywood Studios and um, Animal Kingdom. The parking at Magic Kingdom is a little bit more of a beast. So you park and then you have to walk to the ferry and then you take the ferry across the waterway to Magic Kingdom. So it's just a lot longer um, walking before you even get to the park. Um, so, I mean, I don't mind parking and what, you know, doing the tram and walking. Um, it's probably about the same amount of time as the bus sometimes at night. It's nice having a car because the, especially if you wait and watch the fireworks, that's one thing. If you're watching the fireworks, everybody's watching the fireworks and then everybody's leaving at the same time. So bus wait times can be really long. So, um, so yeah, that is when it's nice to be driving. Are three-year-olds still free at Disney? So it's under three. So three-year-olds are not free at Disney. It's the infant and two-year-olds are. Um, if you were to park mm -hmm. and wanted to go back and rest for a while and come back at night, do mm -hmm. they do something like a hand stamp type equivalent where you or would you be paying twice then in that day? You know, I have not done that. Um, I would have to look, but I would assume you would not have to pay twice. That, But I do not know for sure. Yeah. I would have to look that up. I can look I, that up. Yeah, I won't be, but I just thought someone may want to consider that. Yeah, no, that's very, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, Lindsay? Lindsay? It's Lindsay. I think... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Am I in mute? Okay. Sorry. No. Um, if memory serves, obviously this was 10 years ago. I was actually talking to Lauren earlier today. I haven't been in 10 years. I'm dying. I'm going through withdrawals. Um, if memory serves, when you go to park, I think it's almost like you get a sort of slip if you're going to go to another park. So that slip goes in your, like on your dash. So when you park hop, to the other park and if you're going to park at a different park it's as simple as just okay they see that you've already paid once for the day and you just get to go you get to go into the parking lot then and then it, you don't have to pay again yeah that sounds i think yeah, that sounds familiar yeah now that you're saying it yeah. um all right so when you stay at disney property do they offer transportation or do you suggest getting a rental so they do offer transportation um all resorts have buses some resorts have boat or skyliner transportation to certain parks um so with a rental you do have to pay a parking fee at the resort and then um at the parks. I have to double check that because Lindsay and I were talking about it earlier today. Um, if you have to pay at the park, if you're staying at a Disney property hotel, I need to double check that. Um, so, you know, it's just up to you. If it, the convenience of a car is worth, you know, you just have to weigh your, your options. If you're thinking about a car, the thing about Disney is if you're thinking about it, just do it because you want it to be a hassle-free, stress-free vacation because you're supposed to have fun. It's Disney. So um, that's always my rule of thumb. If you're thinking about it, do it. Um, so if you purchase Genie Plus, does it show up on the Disney app? Yes, it does. So you'll be able to go in. Um, it doesn't look any different per se, but when you go into my genie day, which is a tab in there, it, you'll be able, cause it'll tell you when the lightning lane return time is. And then you just click on that. If you have genie plus, you're able to select a time. If you don't have genie plus, it's going to prompt you to purchase genie plus. If that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, the other thing about having a rental car, I'm just thinking about this, or driving and having a car, um, it is nice if you want to get off of Disney property and go explore Orlando. There's a ton of stuff in Orlando. Um, there are um, outlet malls, a lot of outlet malls, and they have a lot of winter clothes on sale sometimes, just FYI, because we used to do that a lot when we would go down there. We'd stock up on our winter clothes. Um, but yeah, it's just up to you on how you want to do it. Um, so I think we're at our hour mark. Um, if anybody has any questions, definitely pop them into the chat. Um, I also wanted to say that, um, you know, I am a, a travel agent that specializes in Disney. I do not charge any fees. So if you want to, uh, plan your trip with me, uh, send me an email, um, because I don't charge any extra fees. So whatever you're paying for your trip, my help is included. Um, and then if anyone um, would like to pop their email into the, or send me a separate chat uh, with your email address and I'll add you to my, um, you know, I'll send you a thank you email and add you to my, um, I send out Disney updates occasionally um, to everybody or specials that they're running. Um, so if you're interested in that, just send me a separate chat. I found online that if you're staying at a Disney resort hotel, you get complimentary standard parking at the theme parks for you, the length of stay. Perfect. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> so there you go. You don't have to pay at the parks, which is nice, but you do have to pay at the hotel. And so if you're staying at a deluxe, it's, I believe $20 a night, moderate is 20, value is 15. I believe they might have changed it because they're always changing their prices. Um, but it's about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing about Disney too, is every fiscal year. So their fiscal year is in September. Every year they're increasing prices. So I always suggest going when you want to go as soon as you're ready. All right. So if anybody has any questions, pop them in the chat or unmute. Well, otherwise, thank you so much for coming. It's been very informative. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I appreciate it. I love talking Disney. I could talk about it all day. Lindsay and I were on the phone for like an hour earlier today. <laughs> because literally, we can talk like all of it. I can talk about all of it. I can talk about merchandise for an hour. Um, so anything you want to talk about, I'm here for you. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Yep. And then, uh, so we recorded this. If anyone um, wants to come back and take a look at it, we will be uploading it to our, the library's YouTube channel in the next day or so. And I will send out the link to everyone in their email. Um, as this one last reminder, we also have a genealogy 101 events on February 8th. Uh, which is another virtual event like this. So thank you all again for coming and have a good night. Bye-bye.